Hey, it's Ryan here, and we're back with the 15th century, or the 13th to 15th century Gallo Glass Warrior. And we have Celtic Templar. You can go by and check him out on YouTube. He's done a whole series, which that's what we're doing, is a series on the Sparthax that he sent us. And he sent us all different types of goodies. He sent us flat mail riveted armor with uh, solid rings. He sent us round, all riveted mail armor. And he even sent us a brush leather coat. I don't have that out here because it keeps raining off and on sporadically and I didn't want to have to run that type of armor in and out of the house because it is kind of cumbersome to run around. But I'd like to thank him for that. He sent us the axe. He's going to be sending a scale coif. So everybody give him props and go by and like, uh, like all his videos of course. But uh, subscribe to his channel and while you're, at, while you're at it, be sure and subscribe to ours because we're going to have a whole series on this and I'm sure you're going to want to come back and watch the Sparth Axe. This is an axe that was used by the Gallo Glass Warriors. They were Norse Gaelic warriors from the 13th to 15th century. They were like a cult or a sect. Very much like their ancestors, Viking mercenaries. They see the Norse mercenaries that came over to the country. They intermixed with the clans and created such an awesome group of warriors that still used Sparth or big old two-handed Dane-like axes. This axe here is made in a specific way. I think it's because of hitting armor. The Irish version of this Donegal axe that was from the Dublin Museum, that's what it's replica, a replica of, the specific Irish design I think was so the tips, because normally you have horned and beaked axes, especially on the big broad Dane axes of the late per period two-handed axes as people know them, uh, the Viking axes, the pole axes. This one is curved. Why would you do that? Well, I think it's to protect the tips, because they were hitting a lot of plate. A lot of people had plate armor, coat of plates when they were around full plate, a lot of mail. So the stuff they were going against, they didn't want to damage the points on the axe because it wouldn't do them as much good if they're damaged. And they must have done, done a lot of swinging and trying to cut and damage the opponent with the sheer force and power. Can we still hear the legend like we did early period about the Dane axe, these big figure eight swings and huge crushing blows. If they didn't even cleave into the other warrior, they would actually crack skulls, break necks, uh, break ribs, uh, just a sheer concussion could lay a man out. So we're going to find out today if that's true, if they were going along the field just laying everybody out. And uh, we're going to try with this helmet here. And this helm's very much, much like the low Henny find, which was a, a Gallo Glass Warrior helmet, like a Barbute. It has a lot of those attributes. It has a lobster tail kind of back, so it's kind of a bastardized uh, helmet or helmer. We've got cheek plates. All this stuff's plausible within the period. Between 13th and 15th century later period, this is definitely plausible to me. And it's a 16 gauge. We have pierced it before, deep enough to injure the man, but with a pointed object. That was a Faux. Uh, you will see a clip of that possibly here, but let's get going and see what this can do with this. And if this protects him well enough, we'll kind of lower the armor and keep going. Well, that was certainly a crushing blow. We hit double metal here, and that just crushed it. I don't need to get a close-up of that, but that had to hurt. I'm sorry, this man would be laying out probably from the impact. Creased well. Didn't do much to our edge at all. This is really good steel, by the way. If you want to know how to get one of these, look in the description down below. far in again we still creased that horribly that is a dent from hell I need to get more of a tip shot if I want to get into this thing so let's go ahead and see what we can do ah! wow he's bleeding he is bleeding I might hit it one more time for good measure, but we will look at this. He's got blood coming out of his skull. This is amazing. Oh! Another massive blow cutting into the helmet. That is a new cut for sure. Too far forward. That's exactly what I thought this axe was for. The front is taking some damage from this, but it was so it wouldn't break the tip of the axe off and you could do these type of blows. Ah. 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 That one turned on me. We got some good stuff here. Let's go ahead and look at it and see what we have. This is going to be good. The axe did take some damage from the armor because it was a very sharp edge and it needs to be 
straightened a little bit and sharpened, but that's not our issue. Our issue is, did our ax do what we thought it might be able to do? These are tremendous. We haven't had anything hit with this amount of force yet, have we? To do this kind of stuff to it. Oh. Rivets loose. That's a whole band, plus this is actually one unit of metal that's been hammered out. So we need to remove this and blood. see what we got going on. We got blood leaking out of the helmet. Like, see it? Oh, come around, make sure we get that. That is just dripping. This helmet was already slightly damaged, but I do believe that is a new hole. That's just definitely smushed in too. Oh yeah, but that's because of the weight. Oh yeah, <laughs> those impacts and the heat from the helmet. Oh yeah. The head is cracked open is what it looks like. It looks like we cracked our skull is what happened to it. So what it's done is it effectively cut into the helmet where we have a hole here where the tip hit and we got a cut and it just went straight on from there and just damaged the skull. This one cut in as well. This is definitely cut from the tip of the actual axe. So that means the axe can cut the 16 gauge metal. It didn't go into the head but it's farther forward. Oh it did right here. It actually hit the skull. All here, this shows this man would be unconscious and most likely at that period would have died from that impact. Even the other impacts I wouldn't have wanted. Those things would have, the helms weren't always as thick as everybody imagines. Yes, this thing could be 12 gauge, stop bullets, very rare, or it could be just something like this, 16 gauge. And it, it did not protect this man at all. He had light padding. He didn't have a koi for extra padding under it, but still. We're gonna go back with our neck hit. And I, I would say that I think his nose is probably melting. Melting and smushed up against the hot metal. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, ballistic shell does have that problem if it's against something red hot. If it's against something red hot that's uh, black metal in the sun and the sun is starting to come out because we have thunderstorms. That's why I don't have all the male armor out here that was sent to me and everything to show it off. I didn't want to risk it. Okay, we do have some damage to this axe. We don't have damage towards the back and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the back of the axe and we're going to try to use our skill here and go for a neck blow i just want to see what it does oh, oh i hit the i hit the cheek plate it cut into it and scored it but i don't know if that would have killed him but that would have possibly knocked him out that could have been a complete knock that could have been a complete knockout look at that way it's deformed we'll look at that in a second Yeah, we went into the stand and the uh, gambeson. That's horrible. It cut the gambeson. So this Akaton style gambeson would not be a match for it. We'll look at our, our damage in a second. Oh! Did I hit the mail? Could you tell, Caddy? We'll try it one more time. Oh, that was a mail hit. Let's see what we've done to our mail and the neck was a bit low that would have definitely hurt you just the impact to the side of the neck could have pushed uh, blood up into the brain knocking you out just like a judo chop we hit right here scored our rings but his neck seems to be okay he is bleeding though still Let's try one more and then we'll go to the koi Oh, I know that was right in. Hell yeah. And we're using towards the back of the axe with the front the beak. Hit with the beak, excuse me. Hit with the beak of the axe. And it kind of caught on that ring. Another deck hit. I think he's okay from that. Let's take all this off and get a really good look at what this did to the helmet before I fall from the heat. Oh, we gotta look at the helmet. Oh, we are. What we're doing is we're looking at what happened here and then we're switching out stuff. Yes, but you said to get a good look at the helmet. Oh, the helmet looks terrible. I know this. You smushed it. We didn't break the jaw, but that cheek plate bending in, if anybody can see that, would have knocked you out. This style of helmet with 16 gauge, not, you know, heavier, uh, if it wasn't hardened or anything, that's caved in. 
that's at least a knockout in the tourney for sure <laughs> right and these hits of course went through and then the neck hits on the male the male seemed to protect the most with the Akaton style gambus and we have no cuts or anything but i can't promise that those impacts hitting those arteries and everything in the side of the neck like a judo chop hitting you in the neck wouldn't have knocked him completely unconscious or injured his neck any of these blows very well could have yeah uh, I'm getting this oven off. And we've got our male coif, and then we have an Akaton style uh, padding and four layers of uh, heavy linen, uh, actually made into a quilted arming cap. He has the uh, also the arming material he had here earlier, same thing. It's very thick, very, very durable, very tough, lots of padding. And this is not historically accurate. This is budded male, but we're gonna be cutting against it. So cutting against the budded male means, chances are it may knock rings out by unbending them, but we're not gonna cut through this. There is no way that this edge is going to cut through these rings and go directly into the head from the edge, no. What we're checking here is the impact. So over this uh, arming cap, that's a Akaton style, you know, where it's stuffed with batting and four layers of cloth quilted, very, very tightly uh, stitched, and it's very thick. That's what's going to be absorbing our impact. That and a little bit of the male, you know, dispersing the energy. We also have that around the neck, so we can come back and hit the neck too and try to do a, it's going to so tear this all the heck. I'm going to have to repair it, but this is 14 gauge, oh. the 3 8 inch rings. Hey, it was oh. from Medieval Shop, sent to me a while back. It's more for reenactment and Not ornamentation, but I can attest that wearing this with a smaller ring size in the 14 gauge over multiple layers of proper gambeson, layered gambeson cloth, stopped 70 pound arrows. Yes, 65 to 70 pound arrows were stopped by this easily. And it didn't even damage it that badly. So just to give you an idea that it can stop stuff, it's just not reliable. So let's go oh, ahead and see what we can do. So We're gonna see if we can destroy that head. He has been cooking a little bit. I had to take a break for a minute. I changed armor, everyone. Oh, I got something that was cold out of, the, out of the house and also thought it was a good point to bring up this in old videos has stopped arrows, so. Oh, <laughs> that was crazy. We cut the rings, but we didn't cut of the head. We just like totally uh, removed them. <laughs> now we gotta figure out how to get it back on his head. That's crazy. Caddy, this is not good. Rings, but we didn't cut the, we didn't cut the rings. What we did is we caught the rings and basically pulled it apart. This is a glance, it caused it to glance. So we didn't kill him. We didn't kill him. That was just a, uh, glancing blow so he's sitting there laughing at us he said you're saying reenactment mail oh no lad this is the real deal well, that's what he's saying right Caddy? i thought no if you stop talking i'm gonna shit myself and run away that skibby toilet or something ah. oh! uh. i would say it didn't cut through we don't have a cut in this. The gambus had protected him. We need to look at this. That's bad. This is real bad. If you don't have a helmet, at least what you ha I had on earlier on him, or like that bassinet I was wearing, this is what would happen. My finger is in the indentation. This is just yeah, really bad. I didn't realize there's a split right down the middle of his face. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to pull this up and look at it. It smashed his... Panic. Oh yeah, he's there is no skull. It's destroyed. I don't need to do much with that. I can just show you like that. We might come back and hit it again real quick. Why not? He's gone. And this male is so hot, it is burning my fingers. That's why I had to take the other male off. And I don't know how much longer I stay out here. I almost had a heat stroke. I felt like it. Oh, this poor guy. He's he's toast. So it didn't cut through it. That's the point we're trying to make. That wasn't a cut. That was just impact. That was just extreme impact. Now he wants to see if it could break the neck. And I don't know if we could break a neck just by the sheer impact, but we could try. Ah! 
The gambeson didn't cut, but we may have broke our neck. <laughs> We busted the spine. Come get Caddy. You're missing it all. Caddy. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. You broke his spine, I heard. From the neck. I broke it from the base of the spine when I came through with the impact. What it did is, you know how we have a skull that was, you know, already shattered? Yeah. We broke the way our spine works. We broke the spine on the inside of the skull. All right, look on the side over here. That is destructive. We broke the spine inside the skull, if you can see inside here. Uh, the skull that was cracked broke the rest of the way and it separated. So this whole head is basically falling off here. Yeah, so I think that Connor was 100% right. I don't know if it would have done it with a full helmet, but this is just, yeah, ridiculous. That'd be. Do I get to keep the burn time? We're gonna set him back up here. One last hit and it's all over. Do I get to keep the brain pan or do you want it back? Uh, I don't know, he might want that later. He might need that brain pan. I don't know, he might want it, you never... I don't think he'll be doing much with it anymore. You can have it, Caddy. That is the nastiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> the impact was just so devastating. And I admit the head's kind of hot, but that didn't cause that. It's still very cold in the internal. It melts from the outside in, the inside stays completely cold. But that is just nasty. Celtic Templar, I hope people go and really thank you for this. That was what you were talking about, possibly like something that did all so much damage. I mean, not a real person that would have came up, wouldn't have came apart like that, the flesh. But it's just the impact was so extreme that would have caused so much vertebrae damage. At the very least, you'd have a whiplash effect where you wouldn't be fighting anymore, correct? Caddy? I hit behind, behind with the uh, beak. Oh, I meant to get a better, we cut the entire back out through the beak. Let's go ahead and do one more. And there we go. That's what we wanted. It's gone. And blood everywhere. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, Connor. We're gonna come back with the actual torso. We'll test some of your male armor. We'll test it against thrust. We'll test it against some hits. We'll try the breastplate and see how big a dent this thing can put in a breastplate. I am going to fix the edge. It has lost some of its sharpness, I'm not gonna lie. There is a little bit of a bend in the actual edge, which is expected hitting armor and stuff can happen, but there's no serious damage that can't easily be repaired on this ax. This is common ax damage from using an ax that uses that much force with a very fine cutting edge. Excellent video. I enjoyed it very much. I almost had heat stroke, but it was well worth it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Be sure and help us out on PayPal if you can. Go by and help us out on Spot Fund. that's down below. Uh, we still need help trying to get a new location. We won't be here much longer, as best I can tell. They basically bought our house and expect us to pay them rent. I've told everybody about this in the last videos. And uh, it was through the county auction because I had back taxes from when I inherited it. We weren't able to pay them up or get a loan to do so. I tried before it was too late. We do have a chance to buy it back in the next year or two years. I don't know if we'll get enough money, but at least get enough money to get a good location outside the city limits, maybe a little trailer or something, a way to shoot videos and the animals and the kids would be safe, the boys would be safe. The kids would be good enough for me. Appreciate all the help. There's donations from the last video. I highly appreciate it. You can go through PayPal if you like at painthrand at yahoo.com if you'd rather use that ID there and you don't trust the spot fund thing, which I think the spot fund thing's fine. Seems to be okay. If you want to help us out on Patreon to do more videos, be sure and go by there. If you have anything you want to send to us, be sure and contact me. You could send us stuff to test on the uh, channel like this awesome Sparthax that I very much dearly love and anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It checks out there and uh, be sure and subscribe, like, uh, share, comment, <laughs> everything. Because uh, the way it is now with the algorithm, it's really hard to get any new views. So please try to turn people onto this video and hopefully they'll enjoy it. If they start bitching about the, uh, this is this male here, riveted and solid, okay? Almost everything we test is riveted and solid. The only thing I've used on the channel in a while that's not is this butted stuff. So as a disclaimer at the end, this stuff did what it was supposed to do. It stopped the cut. That's all it's supposed to do. It wasn't supposed to, you know, hold up. It was just supposed to stop the edge from cutting the head and see what the impact did. So anyway, it did its job. We'll have to repair it later. But anyway, as always, Farvel. If you want to help support the channel, go by StreamElements.com and sport a Thane Thran YouTube shirt. Plus there's many more items. 
You can come visit me on Twitch, Thrand11. I do extreme gaming every night after 12 a.m. CST, U.S. time. You can become a patron on Patreon and uh, help support the channel and see content that can only be seen there.